Good morning. On this Tuesday, we continue with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We pick it up at verse 3 today. Remember, Paul is talking about the day of the Lord. And he says, Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. So what is Paul talking about here? Paul is talking about what the Bible has named the Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, but the Antichrist has not yet been revealed. The Antichrist will be a person who will, uh, literally a person who will set himself up um, as God, he will occupy the temple, which will be rebuilt. He will um, be a man of lawlessness. He will have world government. He will have a lot of authority. Uh, but we need not fear him because we won't be around anymore. Um, he will not appear while the church is still here. Uh, we need to be taken out of the way. Paul described in First Thessalonians chapter 4 what we often refer to as the rapture or the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds when he will come to gather his people to him, that those who have died in him will be raised and those who are living will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye and will go off to be together with the Lord. From that moment, there is a period in the world uh, that the Bible describes as the Great Tribulation. It's uh, described quite a lot in um, the book of Revelation. There's uh, prophecy in Daniel and other prophecies. We won't go into all the details. It's very, very complicated. What we need to know is that we will not be part of the Great Tribulation. We'll be taken out before then. There'll be a time when God will be dealing specifically with the nation of Israel um, and all the um, godless people in the world. What is important for us to focus upon is to keep our eyes on the fact that we could at any moment leave this world, that Jesus could at any moment return, and that we need to be ready. We need to be doing his work. We need to be spreading the gospel. Um, and we need to be doing the work that the church is meant to be doing. And we'll leave the finer details uh, up to God. He's revealed to us a little bit of an outline of what's going to happen. But we don't know all the details and we don't need to know. What we need to know is that we need to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. Our neighbour as ourselves. We need to be working up until the moment that God takes us to be with him. So we just trust in him. We know that God has got it all in control and everything that the Bible says will happen will happen. And we also know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If we're in Christ, we've got nothing to fear. If you're not a Christian, you've got everything to fear. So come to Jesus today. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for a new day. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercy is in you every morning. We love you and bless you. We thank you, Lord, that you love us with an everlasting love. We pray as we set out today, Lord, that you would take us by the hand, that you would lead us and guide us. The Bible says that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We wait upon you, Lord, and we renew our strength in you and in your word. We pray, Lord, that you would just empower us to be good witnesses of you today, wherever we go, whatever we do. May your light shine in and through us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you that you love us, and we ask that you would just lead and guide us. Father God, we lift up before you as we do every day our, our government, our leaders. We pray for them. We pray that you give them wisdom and understanding and discernment and help them. We pray, Lord, that you would encourage those that are doing good, that you would stop those that are doing evil. We pray for those who live under tyranny. We pray, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the cessation of hostilities in the Ukraine and the Middle East and Israel and, and Palestine. Lord, we pray. We pray for those people that are suffering so very, very much. We lift up before you the lost, the broken. We pray, Lord, for those who do not know you, that many would come to know you today. We pray, Lord, that people would repent of their sins and turn to you, knowing that the kingdom of God is at hand. Heavenly Father, help all who preach your word to be true and faithful. Strengthen us as we go about doing your work. We lift up before you the sick, the dying, the poor, the lonely, the homeless, the helpless, the needy. We ask for your mercy and your blessing. Be with those who are mourning. Would you comfort them, Lord, and strengthen them? We pray for those who are meandering through life without giving it much thought that you would wake them up and they would turn to you. 
Father God, we thank you that you've blessed us so abundantly. We can say with David, the Lord is my shepherd. I have no want. I have no needs that he cannot fulfill. We thank you that you fulfill all of our needs. And now we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.